It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Well, good evening. Glad you're tuning in to join us. We have uh, wonderful guests in the studio this evening. Uh, they are with an organization in the county called One Martin. So we're going to be speaking with Marty Rogel. He's the executive director and Rick Hartman, president of One Martin. But before I do that, I want to remind you the ABCs would like to remind you to vote yes for an appointed superintendent on November 6, 2018. Let's hire a professional, not a politician. And the Casey Ingram Show is sponsored in part by Meridian Marina and Yacht Club in Palm City. Meridian Marina is not just a place to store your boat. When you become a member of Meridian Marina and Yacht Club, you can enjoy events such as trips to the Bahamas, snorkeling adventures, marina parties, and more. Check out some of the events at the events tab at meridianmarina.com. You can also try out their great service department that's open six days a week from 8 to 4. Call them up, 772-221-8198, 221-8198, or visit them online at meridianmarina.com for more details. At Meridian Marina, we do all the work so you can enjoy your boating lifestyle. So welcome. I have right to my right, Rick Hartman, president of One Martin, and Marty Rogel is on the end. So Rick, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well, thank you. And Marty, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful that you guys are both in here. So tell me, I don't know which one wants to start out. What is One Martin? One Martin is an organization started two years ago to just kind of change the conversation. We're basically a, uh, some landowners and ag people in Martin County that came together to change the conversation in Martin County. And one of the things that you're trying to do is, is mend any rifts that occur between the coastal communities and the rural communities. Correct. Uh, we want to create a culture in Martin County where diverse interests respectfully work together to cultivate an informed citizenry and build a prosperous community. Uh, our goals are uh, local government, all levels, that operate ethically, efficiently, and transparently, a stronger and more diverse economy that will lead to an ever-improving quality of life for everyone who lives in Martin County, and a citizenry that understands and respects the history and role of agriculture in Martin County's local economy and supports its long-term viability. Well, certainly I imagine one Martin had something to say about the, the recent uh, lack of transparency, I should say, with our, our county commission. That was kind of one of the things that you want is to have commissions that are open, uh, as far as open so that the public knows what's happening, that they are there to represent us and everybody that is representing us is doing it in a transparent way. That's that's true. You've, you've stepped right in a landmine with us. but. We agree with your statement, but also we think we're not going to attack people personally, and that's the main thing with, with One Martin, that we're, we're not finger-pointing. We don't call names. We're not out to embarrass anybody. Uh, but one of our main goals is transparency in our government, and yet it has been lacking, or it was lacking, in a previous commission. And that's exactly right. Uh, it's, it's not here to point fingers at any one single person, but it's, it's government as a whole. And uh, it's, you know, one thing that I'm impressed with your organization is it does start at home, Rick. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of things that are happening nationally and, uh, you know, at a state and federal level. But uh, I've always felt that uh, what occurs locally impacts us really the most. Well, I, we think that our Board of County Commissioners and our local governments are, impact us directly on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, the federal government's important. What goes on in the state's important. But what happens here in Martin County is most important that, that affects us on a daily basis. I'm a business owner, and we just want a community that, that can prosper and grow with commissioners that, that are able to see both sides of the story, listen to the story, and then make a decision and not come in with a preconceived notion. That's absolutely right. I think that's a fair statement. Marty, who all is involved with One Martin? It's, uh, we're in the process of expanding the, the base, but um, the original group, as, as Rick said, are um, some business people, some landowners, um, and uh, we're in the process now of, of creating a broad base of partners, and um, you know we're getting a fairly good response because people – you know, don't want, the, as Rick was saying, the finger pointing. Uh, they want um, communication. Yeah, they want collaboration. Mm -hmm. And they want people to work together for the common good. 
Absolutely. So uh, Rick Hartman is the president. Uh, Rick Melchiori is the vice president. Uh, Warren Wilson is treasurer. Carl Frost, secretary. And Wes Carlton is one of your members. I don't, I don't see a title. Ransom Hartman, Ransom Reed Hartman. I, I think uh, Rick knows him a little bit. <laughs> it's his son. Uh, and Mitch Hutchcraft as well as John Scott Lang. So that's the leadership. Long. Uh, John Scott Long. Thank you. I had uh, saw that wrong. So John Scott Long. Um, do you have other members? Do you have monthly meetings? How, how can people interact with your group? Uh, they should go to the website, onemartin.org, um, see what we stand for, um, and let us know. Uh, read the newsletters. Get on our mailing list. Um, we're looking to, you know, expand that so that we can communicate with people so that um, there is an open dialogue. Um, and we, we hope that people basically uh, decide that, yeah, good, good communication is, is what we're offering, that we provide facts, um, not rhetoric, and that they can rely on what we say. Absolutely. And I was on your website earlier, and you did have a lot of uh, facts on here that I, I found interesting. Um, you know, agricultural, uh, agriculture and ranching. Uh, farming and ranching are the bedrock in Martin County. 11% of the jobs in Martin County are in farming. Uh, if you include agriculture, natural resources and related industries, it jumps to 20, just over 25% of full and part-time jobs. So I'm going to ask quiz you guys. How many farms are in Martin County? I don't, I don't, it depends on where you want to make the break. I mean, you, right here in Martin County, we have the 17th largest beef producer in the United States. So we go from that size, who, and, and that's the Carlton family there on our board. And then we go all the way down to somebody like John, I mean, uh, Carl Frost. Carl Frost is 40 acres. He's organic. He grows his own. He sells locally. He has local events. Uh, he's true agritourism. And in the middle, we have john long and john long is a farmer has been here for 25 years i think and last year he gave away for gleaning which goes back to food banks almost a half a, a half a million five hundred thousand pounds of of vegetables mostly corn and sweet potatoes and and nobody knows those kind of things are going on no, they, they don't. They, uh, as you said, you're trying to bridge that gap between coastal communities and the rural communities. And, um, you know, our agricultural industry is extremely important. We import, in my opinion, way too many fruits and vegetables. And to have this in our own backyard is really a treasure. And it is part of the Treasure Coast itself. And uh, it's 587 farms here that's, that's uh, in the county. It's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. Um, hun almost 140,000 acres. So the market value of the product sold hundred and over 165 million dollars uh, so this is really a huge impact to Martin County um, what other kind of crops are grown I see a whole list here uh, citrus potatoes and beets and cabbage well citrus citrus is almost gone I, I think there's probably and that's debatable but we started out with somewhere around 26,000 acres 20 years ago and and I'm also a realtor and I specialize in selling land and I don't think there's a thousand acres of citrus left in the entire mm. county uh, sugarcane is taking its place. Sugarcane, in my opinion, is the most benign crop we can grow. So it's probably the biggest crop we grow in, in Martin County. Now, there's somewhere around 20,000 acres of sugarcane. Uh, there's potatoes, there's sweet corn, there's bell peppers, there's lychee nuts, there's, I mean, lychee fruit, star fruit, uh, cabbages, green beans, bell peppers the whole we are the kind bunch. of the salad bowl we're not as good as the eaa on growing vegetables but we're kind of the salad bowl of, of the united states through the winter time the soil uh that's on the western part of martin county is that very rich as well from being close to lake okeechobee uh, you know obviously the eaa has very rich soils so it does it filter north no, so to speak no, no. The, the, the eaa was created by the overflow of the lake and it made muck uh, we have mineral soils, but mineral soils for growing vegetables is not all bad. That when you do a soil test, as, as John Long said one time, it, it, it's not, not really difficult. You do your soil test, and so you know what it takes to grow that plant, to grow that crop, and you add what you need. And, and that's a mis misconception that a lot of people have with agriculture is that we in agriculture like putting fertilizer on. You know, that's just a really good thing to do. Well. That's not true. Fertilizer has gotten really expensive. Margins have got really thin. And so today you take a soil test and you know what it's going to take to produce that crop. 
and you put no more than is agronomically necessary because every pound you put that is not agri agronomically necessary, that's wasted money, that's costing you money. Uh, same way in the beef industry, I've got cows of my own, and we do soil samples, we do tissue samples, and we know what it's going to take to make that grass grow, and margins in beef, you know, four or five years ago, anybody could make money raising beef. Today, that's not true. So every pound of fertilizer that I cannot use, that I don't get to use or don't want to can't use, is money in my pocket. So that's a big misconception that people think agriculture just puts out fertilizer just Willy just nilly. to put it out, just and it's not necessarily the more the better either. No, I mean there is a there is a threshold that you know when you get to this level, more is not going to do you any any bit any more good. So why would you waste money? And and today when you put out fertilizer, you, GPS comes into play that when you're harvesting that crop, you're you've got a computer in your in your harvester machine, whatever it is, and you're taking readings on how many pounds or tons you're producing per acre that's recorded by that computer and then when you get ready to put fertilizer out you know that this is what's in the soil and you know this is what you took out of the soil and so you put down t to the exact pounds that you need it it's phenomenal what we have how farming has changed it's nothing like it, grandpa did it it sounds like a real science it is a science what is your biggest challenge would you say or maybe you have challenges that you have with the agricultural community Lack of information and knowledge. Um, you know, people assume that somehow the supermarket grows food, and that's not the way it works. Um, but the, in, in terms of the, the history of One Martin and why it came to be, is that um, there's only been one side of the discussion um, for decades in Martin County, um, and as particularly as it relates to growth. Right. And the there are people who just don't want to see any change or any kind of growth. Well, you can't have a responsible economic base and have no growth. So it's important for one Martin and others to start talking about, well, look, you know, we don't have to be Broward or Miami-Dade in, in Martin County, but there's a certain minimum amount of economic vitality that's important. It absolutely it, people, is. People talked about what really kind of struck me was people were talking about build out, and I always ask, what does what does build out mean? Uh, people are moving to Florida, and there is no way we can say build out unless build out to me conjures up an image of we're going to put a chain link fence around Martin County, and we're we're, we're as big as we're going to be, and and if somebody dies, then we'll have a lottery and somebody else can move in. And, and, and what really struck me and what really kind of was the impetus to get this going is a really good land use attorney said, Rick, here's the fallacy with that, that if you, if you look at the lights to the south, this was an aerial, uh, a, a nighttime aerial of Florida, and so you see all the lights to the south, and you go north of us, and you see all the lights. And then you hit Martin County, and you can pull this up today. It's kind of dark, comparatively speaking. And, I, and, and so they said, here's what's going to happen. If we as a county don't responsibly allow ourselves to grow and we've only grown two percent a year or a little less over the last 25 years so we're not there's never been a rampant growth i don't care was a no growth commission or pro growth or slow growth whatever name you want to attach on them we've never grown more than two percent a year but if we don't allow some kind of growth that the legislature if a person owns a piece of ground at some point if they get turned down enough times they can petition the legislature and the legislature is going to tell us how to grow and and, and as a multiple generation Florida, uh, Martin County, and I don't want the legislature telling us how to grow. That's right, and I, I agree with you 100%. Um, there's going to be growth that needs to be responsible, and it, it is. Um, and I want to point out on your website, you talked just about that very thing about good government. Something everybody says about growth is, oh, my goodness, you're going to destroy our four-story height limit. I have not honestly heard one person that wants to take that away hmm. in any facet of the discussion so every time somebody says growth that's not what it means but the population in florida is growing there is going to be growth and we just want to make sure it's responsible and that's exactly what you're saying so well, if, if there's no economic development where are the jobs going to be for um, right. people's kids to be able to stay in martin county that's right casey one of the things that really scared me one time was that that, that, that i was meeting with one of our uh, she's not a commissioner anymore but uh, we we she had we met with her individually. There was three of us in the room and her, and she. I said, "How are you doing, Commissioner?" She said, uh, "Not very good." And I said, "What's the problem?" And she said, "That there's like 
I forget the number, a thousand people a day moving into Florida, fifteen hundred a day moving into Florida. And I said, That's exactly why we're here. We want to talk about how we're gonna manage that growth. And she said, No, that's not what I want. We're hundred and fifty thousand people in this county today, and if I can figure out how to take this back to a hundred and ten thousand, that's what I wanna do. And to me that's just that's worse than putting your head in the sand. That that that's ignoring what's coming and how are we gonna plan for it. Oh, you're absolutely got a plan for it. And and how do you pay for your resources within the community if you're cutting back um, on any kind of growth? As you said, good jobs provide good salaries, um, and those people are going to spend in the in the community. If we don't have good jobs for our people, what's going to happen? Um, you look at the long term of this. We can't just rely on retirement taxes and expect this community to thrive. It's not going to happen that way. At some point, it's going to catch up. Um, you you had mentioned too with with the uh, the growth management. And I was going to actually slide over to the fact of Hope Sound and Indian Town are, are two examples of communities that wanted to be able to uh, control their own destinies, so to speak. And uh, Indian Town is now its own village. It's incorporated, I believe, is the correct term. And Hope Sound Hope Sound is on its way. And it's just for those reasons they want to have responsible growth and be able to bring in businesses that can provide jobs to their communities or what have you on the different decisions so if, if you fight back any kind of growth long enough these are kinds of you know this the kind of things that'll happen people are trying to take their own destiny into their hands and that's indian town and hope sound um i, I also wanted to point out I, I think it's very interesting you said the annual per capita income in martin county is fifty eight thousand, the fifth highest in the nation that's incredible that's per capita. If you look at the average salary, we don't do well at all. Um, and the per capita is distorted by Jupiter Island and places like that. And you said the average wage is about 39000 making right. Martin County one of the lowest in the nation. Right. And that's just what you were you're pointing out. So more than 90% of the businesses in Martin County employ five people or fewer. Um, over, I really think about that. Over 90% of the businesses in Martin County employ five people or fewer. In other words, we have very few large businesses that can employ a, a good deal of our population. Um, the, tar the 10 largest employers in the county, um, two of the largest are nonprofit or governmental, four are retail, two are aerospace, one is trucking, and one is banking. Based on population growth estimates and to maintain a 5% unemployment rate or better, Martin County would need to add over 3,300 jobs by 2020. So that's one of the the main things with your organization is making people realize this we cannot stay the same the entire county has to work together um, one thing i liked about indian town is there's room for a lot of growth out there uh, you have waterway for travel you have the railroad for travel and you have interstate so let's look at these areas and see how our whole county can benefit that's that's one martin right that's one martin and, and indian town has got a natural gas they got natural gas in Indian Town. They have this is over my pay grade, but they have a uh, internet node there that goes straight into the big internet bank. So w with with something like um, Indian ITS, they're tied into an internet. They have a, a data storage facility there that's second to none in the country. So there's a there's a lot of benefits to Indian Town and things that can happen in Indian Town. And one of the one of the fallacies that you look at, people say we have enough industrial land, enough land in, zoned industrial, but if you pull up a map, and pull up a wetland map and place it on top of where the industrial land is, when we did the comp plan, there was some really thought went into that, and a lot of the industrial land is wet, and so yes, yeah, land use industrial, it's zoned industrial, but it's too wet, and because of our stringent wetlands rules, and I'm not knocking them that you, you, you those are not going to be developed so we need to figure out how to place all these businesses that indian town is going to try to bring one of the things that um we've been talking about this at, at, at the board meeting there hasn't been um, an economic summit in martin county in decades where people come together and say this is what the goals are this is our objectives this is the, what we our vision of what the county should look like and what kind of economy we should have so that it really benefits everybody and so w one of the things we're going to be pushing for is um, something a, a summit like that Marty I like that idea a lot we need we do need to have the conversation and bring everybody to the table and if 
you guys were able to do that, I think it would be absolutely fabulous. Well, and like Marty said, we're already, we're already working at that. We've talked to the Economic Council and we've talked to the Treasure Coast Builders Association. And I think if we can come all together in some of the chambers, Right. We can pull that off. We had a farm to ta- uh, farm to city week, first one that's been held in Martin County in years, and one of our featured speakers was Crystal Styles with uh, the economic development side of FPNL, and she really had some startling statistics that if we don't do something, we'll lose the young people that we want to get back here. We've got A-rated schools, but there's nowhere for those A-rated schools graduates to work to come back and work, and so we're educating these kids. And, and, and the commissioner one time said at a, at a young uh, young professionals meeting, well, if you can't find a job here, that's too bad. Just go somewhere else and find it. I, I find that really distasteful that, that I've got grandkids that I want to make sure they can find a job here. I want to touch on one other thing, and it, it's an environmental issue because it's something you hear, and I, I know that myself, I, I know how careful farmers are and how much they have changed with the technology over the years of, of making sure that they are not polluting and making sure that you know as you said it's not an overuse of fertilizers so what do you say to those people that say farming's bad it's polluting the river i i would i saw a statistic from fdax of florida department of agriculture and consumer services that in martin county the amount of the, that they rate their fertilizer two ways commercial and home use that's not the correct word but some kind of, it's something to that effect. And home use fertilizer was going up, commercial fertilizer was going down. Now that was while the groves were going out, and so yes, we were using less fertilizer, and that's probably stabilized some. But if you look at the amount of fertilizer we use on an acre of crops or an acre of grass or an acre of anything, that number has gone down. And with our stringent rules that we have today, farmers are, are monitored. Uh, if, if we don't take care of it, we get fined, we get inspected, and people say, well, the BMPs are not inspected. Last year's legislature uh, put money in the budget for FDACs to hire people to come out and monitor BMPs, best management practices. So, yeah, it used to be kind of voluntary, but I don't know many people that cheated on it. I don't know of anybody that cheated on it for sure, but it will be monitored. So I, I, I think agriculture is doing their share of trying to make it better. And Marty, one last question. We got about 30 seconds before we head out of the hour, but uh, is your group reaching out to different industries to come to Martin County? We're not an, we're not an economic development organization. That's the Business Development Board's job. Um, we're more in, uh, focused on making sure that the conversation is correct, that uh, the policies are correct, um, so that the BDB and others can, in fact, bring people in. Absolutely. If you want to learn more about this organization, onemartin.org. It's onemartin.org, and there's contact information on the page and a lot of useful information. I shared some of it online, but there's so much more on the page if you go there. So I really appreciate you coming in tonight, Rick Hartman and Marty Rogal. One Martin. Thank you.